Well, this morning we're going to be in two passages of Scripture. We're going to spend a while in Luke chapter number 1, and then later in the message we'll be in Matthew chapter number 1. Luke chapter number 1 and Matthew chapter number 1, if you would just kind of keep those two places marked, uh, even when we get to Matthew, we'll be flipping back to, to, to Luke some. And so um, let's, be, let's begin by reading Luke 1, verse number 26 through 38, shall we? Luke 1, verse number 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, had also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Now we saw last week how that Jesus' true genealogy was a heavenly one. He existed before He was ever made flesh. He was and is the eternal Son of God. And don't ever forget that. I mean, it's very important. You take away Him being the, the very Son of God, then you take away His ability to, to bring forth salvation. But He came uh, to provide salvation for us. We know that when God sent His Son into the world, He chose two hum human parents to nurture Him and bring Him up. Now, understand that we have very little information given to us in the Bible about Mary and Joseph. We have a little bit more about Mary than we do Joseph, but nevertheless, we just have a little bit of information. So, some might question, why did God choose Mary and uh, to bear His Son and choose Mary and Joseph to raise His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, the information that we do have uh, from Scripture shows us some things to consider about this young couple's life. Amen? First of all, let's see in verse 26 and verse 27, both Mary and Joseph were pure. Uh, Mary had never been touched by a man sexually. Look at verse 26 and 27. And in the sixth month, uh, uh, the angel uh, Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of, of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin. That's important. Virgin, espoused. To a man, we'll talk about that in just a minute, whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Um, this is unmistakable and clearly stated here, and it's confirmed by the fact of what we read there in verse 34, when Mary said, uh, how's this going to be, seeing I've never known a man? <laughs> she knew how it worked. No, no doubt before she was a spouse to Joseph, her parents had... Uh, given her the talk, and she understood that they, how these things went about. And we know that the prophet Isaiah had prophesied in Isaiah 7.14 many years before this, said, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, 
and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now I know there are some who would argue that the Hebrew word translated virgin means a young woman who could have been of questionable character, but they're wrong. In fact, there are some perversions of the Word of God that translate it as just young woman. Mary was more than just a young woman. I mean, there's nothing, uh, no, no sign about a young woman uh, uh, having a child, is there? They're not. But when you have a virgin having a child, if you study the Word out, you will find uh, that it is used six times in the Bible. And in each instance, the context is clear that it refers to a young woman with pure character. And it says here that in verse 27, that Mary was espoused to Joseph. Now, let's think about this a minute. Being espoused was somewhat, but not totally, like our engagement of today. It was somewhat, but except that it was more binding than uh our engagement sort of today. Somebody makes an engagement now and you just want to break it off. You say, okay, give me the ring back. We're done. <laughs> you know? If she give you the ring back, you know, it's going to be done anyway after you say that, right? But uh, I, the espousal period, though, well, back during this time, lasted for one year. And uh, two things are important as we consider Mary's virginity. In the espousal period, sexual contact was considered adultery and resulted in being stoned. Uh, and secondly, the spousal was also so serious a matter that if it was broken, you had to secure a divorce. It wasn't as easy as saying, well, this is just done with. You couldn't do that. Uh, it took a divorce to separate uh, even in the spousal period. Mary and Joseph were both godly individuals. Now, they were not sinless, as some would try to make out that Mary was sinless. She's not. They were godly and allowed themselves to be used to be uh, by God and to be a, they were available to God for His highest purpose. Uh, uh, there's a passage of Scripture, I'm not going to have you turn there, but 2 Timothy 2, verse 20 and 21 talks about <clears throat> the, uh, be, being a vessel in the house of, of God. Great, great, but in great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. And those, that, that's what you would say that uh, both uh, uh, Joseph and Mary were about. They were, uh, they were had dedicated themselves to the Lord, and they were able to be used for God's highest purpose. You can't get any higher purpose than, than uh, birthing the Son of God and raising the Son of God. And it doesn't make sense that God would have chosen an immoral woman to bear His Son and rear His Son. And He wouldn't choose an immoral man to be over the household of His Son uh, that He was going to be raised in. Not when He had the power to control the events. And, and make no mistake about it, our Lord has the ability uh, to control. He, he's, he's sovereign. He's sovereign God. And there are two lessons that young people need to learn from the purity of Mary and Joseph. And that's, first of all, God expects both men and women to be sexually pure, untouched by a man or woman in an immoral manner until they're married. And then God is looking for pure men and women to use in the ministry of the gospel and, and in, in, in meeting the desperate needs of this world. Listen to two passages that I will read. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 3 and 4 says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. That word fornication is talking about uh, sexual relations outside of marriage. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness, according to verse number 7 there. And then Ephesians 5 and verse number 3 says, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Uh, so they were pure, and God still expects His people to be pure. Amen. If you want to be used by God for His highest purposes, keep yourself pure. So both Mary and Joseph were pure. We see also here in verse number 28 that Mary was highly favored. Look at verse 28. An angel came in unto her 
and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. Uh, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Now, three simple uh, yet meaningful things were said to Mary. Mary was highly favored by God. Uh, she not only told, was told that there, but also down in verse number 30, we read, uh, An angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Found, twice she was told she had found favor with God. And uh, she was highly favored here by God in verse number 28. Note the angel did not immediately tell Mary how she was highly favored by God and, and that uh, she was God's choice to bear and to be the mother of Messiah. That came later in the conversation. But she was fixed to be told why she was highly favored. Now, I want you to just uh, uh, think about that. The, the angel had to give her time to adjust to the shock of his spectacular appearance. I mean, if, if you had an angel just suddenly appear to you, as she did, and met, this was back during the time before the com completion of Scripture, and you know, the angels did appear to people at times. And he simply announced that she was highly favored by God, and that's a unique privilege. Think about it. God favors us too. Amen? Those of us that are saved, we're highly favored. God saves us. He gifts us. He uses us for His glory. We are favored by the God of the universe. What an awesome privilege that it, that is, but what an awesome responsibility it is too. To be, to be uh, favored by God. Think about it. So Mary was highly favored by God. Not only that, we see the Lord was with Mary. That's the second part of that verse. The Lord is with thee. The Lord was with Mary because Mary had a relationship with God. Listen, when you have God in your life, you do not walk alone. You don't walk and live life alone anymore. God uh, had been with her in her past. God had been with her in her present. And God would be with her in her future. And no matter where Mary had to walk or what she had to do, God promised to be with her. Now, if you aren't saved, uh, you know, you don't have the Lord with you. If you are saved, aren't you glad that the Lord is with you? He has promised to never leave us nor forsake us. And then a third thing that's said here in verse 28. Blessed art thou among women. Mary was blessed among women. Now, I want you to note that it doesn't say she was to, to be blessed above women, but among women. That's important. The angel was not saying that Mary should be worshipped as some uh, worship Mary today. We don't worship Mary. We worship the Lord. We worship God. Uh, Mary was just a sinner who was saved by the very Savior that she bore in her womb. You don't believe it? Look at verse number 47. She said it out of her mouth. Look at verse 47. Mary said, My soul... Doth, uh, verse 46 and 47. My, Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. She needed a Savior just like you and I need a Savior. She was a sinner who was saved by the very Savior that she bore in her womb. In verse 45, Elizabeth said that Mary was blessed. Uh, look at verse 45. And, and blessed is she that, ha that believed. That, that's what brought the blessing. She believed. And there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And then uh, look down in verse 48. Mary said that future generations would call her blessed there. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Now she wasn't perfect, but she was blessed. Amen. And God was able to use her. And God was able to bless her. So Mary and Joseph were pure. Mary uh, was highly favored. Uh, and I want you to see both Mary and Joseph though, were human. There was nothing supernatural about them. They were both humans. We see the humanity of Mary mentioned there in verse 29 and 30. Uh, we see the hum humanity coming out in her. When she, when she saw him, saw this angel, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation th this should be. In other words, man, what is this guy talking What is he talking about? <laughs> How's that? How, how, how does somebody address somebody the way he just addressed me? You know, that's what she, in her mind she had that that uh, that question. Verse thirty, and the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, 
for thou hast found favor with God. Now, listen, Mary was both troubled and stricken with fear. And I think that we can understand why she was afraid. An angelic being from God standing before you. Uh, he stood in all the da dazzling splendor that is necessary to reveal that he was truly from God. I believe, believe that. The fact that Mary was troubled needs to be briefly considered, though. He said Mary was troubled at his saying, at, at what the angel told her. Say so it was the, the message that caused her to be troubled. The, the fact that she was highly favored, uh, the fact that the Lord was with her, and the fact that she was blessed among women. Mary, no doubt, was troubled because she did not understand how God could so highly favor a person like herself. You wonder sometimes why God's so good to you? Yeah, I do. I mean, uh, I know God saved me. I know I'm saved by God's grace, but you know, I'm still living in this flesh, and there's, there's, there's times when the, the, the flesh wants to rise its ugly head, and you say, man, uh, how, the, how does the Lord continue to love someone like me? She never expected to be highly favored by Him. What we see here is that there is a deep humility in Mary's character. Mary was not a proud, self-centered, flighty, or a frivolous young woman who was conscious of herself or felt that she merited and deserved the attention of others, like so many today. Uh, again, we live in a world full of selfies, don't we? I mean, it's all about self a lot of times. But she was a young lady who loved God and had determined to live a pure and responsible life. From her response throughout this passage, we can sense that she had a sweet spirit that was full of softness, warmth, and tenderness, and was responsive and, and willing and subject, subjective and giving and thoughtful and kind. I mean, that's the kind of spirit that we see here. Mary, however, didn't see herself as anyone special. And so when she heard that God had favored her and would use her in a very special way, she was troubled. <laughs> she was troubled. How, how could she, just an ordinary, humble maiden, do anything special for God? You know, sometimes we get that way, don't we? We think, well, I know God can use that person and that person, but I don't think that God could use me. Well, listen, if He saved you by His grace, God can use even you. Amen? He, he just can't. And listen, we, we don't know all uh, 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 of her thoughts, but we see that, that uh, she was humble in her opinion of herself. Now, let's turn to Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 1. I told you it'd be later in the message when we got there. Don't turn loose of Luke, though. We'll be back there. In Matthew, chapter number 1, we see the humanity of Joseph. We just looked at the humanity of, of Mary. And here in Matthew chapter 1, let's read verses 18 through the end of the chapter here. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, I mean before they had sexual relations, before the marriage was consummated, you might say, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, notice, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and I shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins." Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. What, this is an a, a, uh, interpretation of the Old Testament writing originally. It, it tells us that the intent was that she was going to be a virgin. Okay. Look at uh, verse 24. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not, didn't have any relations with her, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. So we see the humanity of Joseph. The, the news reached Joseph and that Mary was pregnant. Can you imagine? I mean, you are, you're espoused. 
you think, boy, this is great. Got a, got a, a young wife, and uh, man, I can't wait to probably in preparation getting things together for the consummation of, of the marriage a year later. And, and Joseph knew he wasn't the father. Remember, we said he was pure. We, we don't know all of the thoughts that may have run through Joseph's mind at this time, but we do know that Joseph, who loved Mary, was devastated. She was dev he was devastated. But we see his character there in verse 19. The Bible says that he was a just, and that word just means he was righteous. He being a righteous man, just man, naturally he would divorce her, but he would do it quietly so as not to publicly embarrass her. He would do what is right, but he would, be, he would do it in a kind way. You know, this world needs a lot more kindness, don't it? It sure does. While he was thinking about uh, what he was going to do, just quietly divorcing her and going his own way devastated, he fell asleep and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Now he was told there in verse 20 to fear not, to take Mary as his wife because that, was, that which was conceived in her was of the Holy Ghost. And, and verse number 25 says that when he, he woke, he obeyed the voice of the angel of the Lord and took Mary to be his wife and, and named the, the child Jesus. Amen. That's what he was asked to do. So we see both Mary and Joseph, their humanity, but uh, back in the book of Luke again, uh, both Mary and Joseph were told that Mary would bear the Savior of the world. We just read it there in Matthew. But uh, Mary was told three things about the son that she was going to bear. And this is found in verse 30 through verse 33. Let's read verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. So Mary was told three things about the son she would bear. She was told what his name would be. Now, the name Jesus means Savior, means Savior. And she was told uh, of his great personage, uh, that he was the son of the highest. It says in verse 32, he shall be great, shall be the, the, the son of the highest. Uh, he was to be called that. The, the highest, of course, is God. Therefore, Jesus is the son of God. That is, uh, of the very nature of God, he was and is. Listen, he was, was and is God in the flesh. Amen. God in the flesh come down from heaven. As Paul says in Romans 9, verse 5, that he is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Um, he, he was to receive the throne of David, according to ver the second part of verse 32. Humanly speaking, Jesus was of the house and lineage of David. Remember us talking about the, the, uh, the, uh, those ge genealogies that are in Matthew and, and Luke last week. We talked about that. And those uh, uh, deal with the, 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 the Jesus his hum in hum humanity's terms. Both li of his lines came from... His, from his, his uh, uh, from Joseph and Mary came through the uh, David, the lineage of David. Humanly speaking, Jesus was of the house and lineage of David, and this indicates that Joseph and Mary were, and in, in reality, a descendants of David. Therefore, Christ Himself would become a descendant of David, and then the, His kingdom was to be eternal. There in verse number 33, He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of His kingdom there shall be no end. But listen, when Jesus walked the earth in His ministry in John 18, verse 36, He said very clearly, He said, He answered, He said, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is now is my kingdom not from hence. Now that doesn't mean that Jesus isn't going to rule and reign here on the earth one day, because He is. For a literal 1,000 years, Jesus will reign from Jerusalem as, as King of the whole world. 
And that's going to be after the after the tribulation period, when the Lord Jesus comes back and saves His people, uh, Israel, to save save the nation there. And uh, uh, but we see Joseph was also told to name uh, the child Jesus because he would save his people from their sins. So Jesus' kingdom was to be spiritual, uh, by which it would also be eternal. So Mary and Joseph were both told that Mary would be, bear the Savior of the world. Then we see uh, a fifth thing here. Both Mary and Joseph were confronted with the unbelievable. Think about it. They were both, they were both confronted with the unbelievable. Mary was expected to believe the miraculous. Verse 34. <laughs> you're, you're fixing to have a baby. And the obvious question is, <laughs> how's this going to be? See, I'm not, not an old man. Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be? Seeing I know not, not a man. And, and uh, verse 35, the angel uh, answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Think about it. We see that she was puzzled, but she was not doubting uh, or distrusting the message. She simply asked for more information. I mean, she was single, never known a man sexually. How could she possibly bear a child without knowing a man? And, and note exactly what is said about her conception. The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, there in verse 35. This was going to transpire without coming into contact with a man. In fact, when uh, Joseph took her to be his wife, it says that he did not know her until she bore Jesus, until Jesus was born. So this was going to transpire without coming into contact with a man that God's Spirit simply speaks and is done, whatever's to be done, and it says the power of the highest, who's the highest? That's God, shall overshadow thee. So, so God Himself was going to look after this whole matter of what was going to be taking place. The child's conception and growth during the pregnancy and his birth and life were under the shadow and wing of Almighty God. Amen. Just think about it. The child born of Mary would be holy. He would be the Son of God there, according to the last part of verse uh, 35. Now, uh, He is the Holy One, born by the power of, uh, and the Word and the will of God through the Virgin Mary. But He is also the great I Am, the Alpha and Omega from eternity past. 100% human, 100% God. Fully God, fully human. Mary was expected to believe that that which seemed unbelievable. But you know, Scripture says in Psalm 37 verse 5, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in Him. He shall bring it to pass. Okay? She was about to trust the Lord of, of what was going to be happening there. Proverbs 3 verse number 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. You know, she, yeah, she didn't understand it, but she leaned upon the Lord, what the Lord was telling her. And so Mary was expected to believe the miraculous. Mary was encouraged to believe that with God, nothing is impossible. And we find out in verse 36 and verse 37 there, God, God encouraged Mary with, with two facts. First of all, the, the news that her cousin Elizabeth, who was beyond childbearing age, had conceived a son in her old age and was now six months pregnant. Now we know that was John the Baptist. John the Baptist was going to be the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, then there in verse 37, uh, she was directly told, with God, nothing shall be impossible. When you think about God, there's nothing impossible with God. To say that all things are possible with men is far from the truth, but not with God. When Mary heard and meditated upon the simple statement, with God nothing shall be impossible, she was bound to be encouraged by the simple truth of that. Amen? God expects us to believe Him and His power, regardless of circumstances and our feelings of insignificance. Joseph was then confronted with the unbelievable what we read there in Matthew chapter 1, verse number 20. I'll not turn back over there again, but that which was, he was told that which was in Mary's womb was conceived of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. He needed to hear it from a higher source, and 
than Mary. You know, Mary's listened to the angel, and she's been told, but you can imagine how unbelievable it would have been if she had went and tried to tell Joseph, well, then, you know, let me tell you what, uh, here's the story. You know, you know, unbelievable story, right? Unbelievable story, except he got the same story, and uh, he, he got it from an angel also. Both Mary and Joseph were submissive to God's will for their lives. Mary was submissive to God's will for her life. Look at verse number 38. Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. I mean, her response was immediate and brief. Only one short sentence, yet it was striking and very meaningful here. Mary was saying that she was a bond slave. I mean, the word handmaid means a slave girl. That's what it means. And Mary was saying that she was a bond slave willing to sell herself out completely to God. She was saying that she would give herself completely to God's will. God's word was her will. She surrendered to obey, to totally obey God. She gave herself to serve as God will, being completely obedient and fulfilling His purpose entirely. She, she would act according to thy word. Be it unto me according to thy word. Her response also showed the enormous depth of her trust and dedication to, the, to God. Mary was going to live in society with the stigma of having been pregnant out of wedlock. I mean, she had not, they had not consummated the marriage yet. And... Who of her day would ever believe Mary's story? Nevertheless, she was willing to be available to God regardless of the price. Think about that. Then there was Joseph's discovery of her pregnancy to deal with. She had to trust God to take care of that, which God did. Amen. God took care of telling Joseph, and, and, and Joseph understood. There was also the threat of being condemned to death because of adultery. She had to face the possibility of being stoned because she would have appeared to have been immoral, but she t surrendered totally and completely to the will of God for her life. Joseph also was submissive to God's will for his life. Matthew 1 and verse number 24 and 25 says as much. It says that when they... He did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. So what was required on Joseph's part was a willingness to forget himself completely and trust the Lord. Think about it. Uh, the talk would have been about him too. Yeah, He's the one that married that girl that was pregnant before they got you know, before they, they came together. Yeah, that's them. These are two wonderful examples here that we have of submission and surrender to the will of the Lord that we see in both Mary and Joseph. Listen. Surrender to God is an absolute essential both for salvation and service. Is your life such that God could and would use you? Are you saved? Are you absolutely surrendered to His will for your life? Are you submissive to His will? Are you willing to say, Lord, Thy will be done in my life? I trust that you are. Amen. Because God wants to use each of us for His highest purpose. What purpose is that? I have no idea what God has in store for you. But even if you don't, submit yourself to His highest purpose and carry yourself about in such a way that God could bring forth His highest purpose in your life. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for uh, the wisdom and Lord, the, the recording in Scripture of uh, the choosing of Mary and, and Joseph to... to Mary to birth the, the Son of God and to ra help raise the Son of God and Joseph to help raise the Son of God. Uh, what a blessing to be chosen for, for such a high calling. 
such a high purpose. Lord, even when uh, they were going to be misunderstood, very possibly, they were willing to do that. God, help us to be willing uh, to be obedient, fully obedient to you, even though that we might be misunderstood, um, we might even be ridiculed by some. Lord, may we uh, look to you and uh, those of us that have trusted you for our salvation, help us to live our lives in such a way that do we, we live it for your highest purpose, whatever that you want for our life. We're willing to do that. Just pray that you'd have your way in this invitation today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.